I used to leave the juices on the plate so that I could stack more on them. Yeah. And then you'd have like triple the amount yeah, you get on, on the inside and the outside. Uh-huh. See, I like your style. Mm -hmm. I knew we could be pancake friends. <laughs> Hi there, welcome back to my kitchen. I am Jane DeGraff and today we're making pancakes. Are pancakes one of your favourite things? Oh, like what power? Oh, I guess they're top ten. Come on, it's gotta be... Well, get, get out then. What are you even doing here? Pancakes are like in my top five things that I have to be able to make in my life. Especially now that the kids can do them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna make pancakes or like a crepe, a really thin pancake. These are not the, the puffy, fluffy hotcakes like American pancakes. These are what I affectionately think of as Dutch pancakes because I grew up eating them at home. My dad's Dutch. It was kind of like a Saturday thing that we did. And I've now taught my kids to make it, which is excellent because it means that as long as I'm sitting in the corner of the room clutching at a cup of coffee, they can actually do most of this on their own. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is. And they do, don't they? They get up and they make those pancakes. Yep. I used to make these in a stand mixer or a food processor. It's not, you don't even need to do that. So let's get into it. This is just two cups of plain flour. This is a recipe that I've sort of tinkered with over the years to get the consistency that I remember growing up, which is, you know, flat, thin, crepey kind of pancake, which is what we're working on today. So we've got three eggs into the mix like that. Kids love cracking the eggs. They always fight over who's, you know, whose turn it is. A little drizzle of oil. I'm just using rice bran oil because it's a neutral oil, doesn't have any flavour. Tiny pinch of salt. I said tiny and then I dumped like half the box in there. Oops. Now this is about two and a half cups of milk and what you need to do when you're mixing this in is just keep adding it until you've got it to a nice thin consistency that you're happy working with. You can make them thicker, you can make them thinner, you just keep adding milk until it's at the sort of stage that you like. If you go too far and it becomes too runny, really easy, whack some more flour in, give it another mix. Is it that easy? Whack. Whack. But it is that easy, right? Because if the kids can do it without stuffing it up, and they're only seven and five, then anyone can do it as far as I'm concerned. So in with our milk. And I always just put in a whole lot of it and then check where it's up to. Now we just mix to get the lumps out. Okay, so I'm just going to, while I'm doing this, going to rock into the most controversial part of making crepes and pancakes, which is the do you let the batter rest question. Do you let the batter rest? I don't. You don't, because you don't make the pancakes. You don't do any of it. Um, so the theory is that if you want your pancakes to be really, really soft and lovely, you should make them the night before, make the batter the night before, and let it rest overnight. And the reasoning behind that is if you've got lumpy batter like this, I've still got lots of lumps in there at the moment, it just lets the moisture really disperse all those lumps. It gets right in there, it spreads them all out. I wasn't going to say it hydrates the flour, but now I can't think of another word. It hydrates the flour better so that you end up with less lumps. Um, the other thing it does is it lets any gluten that you've stirred up while you've been mixing relax again, which will stop your pancakes being overly chewy. So if you find that your pancakes are a little bit chewy or are a little bit lumpy, you need to let your batter rest. You got tight gluten. Tight gluten. You got tight gluten. The reality of that is I never let my pancake batter rest because the kids just like, why would you stop them having breakfast on a Saturday if it's going to bring you peace, yeah? Oh. So we just make our pancake batter fresh every Saturday morning or Sunday or any day of the week that the kids want to do it because frankly, pancakes are delicious. And then we just get straight into into making them. One of the things I love about this recipe is it's so forgiving. It is so forgiving. And pancakes are really versatile. Versatile? Versatile. They're very versatile. You can have them sweet, you can have them savoury, you can have them entree, main, dessert, whatever you like. Are you a sweet or savoury pancake? Sweet all the way. Ooh. Wait, wait. Are you plain or sultana? Ah, that's not even a question, plain, because you can put the sultanas in, but if they're in the batter, you can't take them out again. Who are you? When have I ever made you sultanery pancakes? It's an English thing, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah, that Saturday morning smell. All right, let's get rid of this. Now, that's, oh, I didn't show you the consistency. I should probably do that, right? So this is the consistency I like to work with for mine. You can see it's really quite runny because that means I'll be able to spread it out in the pan and make like a crepe, which is the French way of saying a very thin pancake. Um, I've just always known pancakes to be thin because that's how we had them growing up. And the first time I went to someone's house when I was, you know, like a, I don't know, it must have been 
early teens or whatever, staying the night, and they said, oh, we're having pancakes, and we got these hot cake things. I was like, what is that? That's not a pancake! Anyway, horses for courses, you have them your way, I'll have them mine. Now, I am going to, there we go, oh, try not to blow, blow my kitchen up for a start. So this is just a stainless steel fry pan. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need Teflon non-stick nonsense. What you need is to make sure you oil the pan. And that's really, that's it. That's the extent of it here. So we're just gonna heat our pan up. Again, you can do this with oil or butter. What I was taught to do growing up by my father, who was extremely good at pancakes, was to put a tiny bit of butter in the pan with a tiny bit of oil. It stops the butter burning as the pan heats up. I sometimes do this, I sometimes don't. Again, like the recipe, very laissez-faire. You don't really have to think about it too much, you know, if you're feeling a bit shady on a Saturday morning. I sound like the worst parent in the world. The kids cook their own breakfast. I'm feeling shady on a Saturday. It's not like that. I promise it's not like that. Come on, back me up here. It's not like that. Sounds like you have Good Friday. Yay! Woo! I wish that was the truth. It's not. Okay, we've got a nice hot pan going on there. So, you want to grease your pan. I, like I said, I like to use a combination of the butter and the oil, but that is not strictly something that you have to do. And it was a rule in our house growing up that the first pancake in the pan was always a disaster. It was oh, always... I was going to ask. Yeah. So, Why does and it, it suck? Well, the pan's still heating and getting lubricated. I just said lubricated when what I meant was nicely oiled. Um, it's not, not a user-friendly user word, is it? It's just the pan heating up to the right level, you getting your hand in as the, as the cook and getting used to it again. No. No, can't use that still, expression either? No, it just still doesn't make sense. Well, it's just, it's always rubbish. And on top of that, as the chef, you stuff it up on purpose. Why? So that you get to eat it while you're cooking the rest of the stack. So my parents always said that, oh, the first one's, you know, sacrificial, it never works. I strongly suspect that they were doing that so that they could have nibbles. Try, try and do the perfect one first up. Look, I'm not, all right, I will try, but I'm not gonna promise anything because in all honesty, the first one is usually a bit of a dud. You can't change physics. I can't change physics. I can try, watch me, especially when it comes to pancakes. All right, here we go. I think it's usually because you haven't let the pan heat up quite enough. Ready? There we go. So you can see that spreads out beautifully because the batter's nice and thin. Oh, if you could only smell that. Oh, that is Saturday morning with a cup of coffee. Hopefully the kids being relatively calm. Not yet, I haven't eaten. <laughs> Not yet. Then. No, no, our kids are good. If they've got this project, and it is a project, it's a Saturday morning project while you ease into the day with the kids, while one eases into the day. I'm still in bed. You're still in bed. At least you outed yourself and I didn't say, okay, I didn't, I didn't out you on that one. You, you called it. It's true, he's still in bed. Still in bed. Like this. You forgot the dribble. Yeah, well, I <laughs> thought that was a bit unseemly, so I didn't, I didn't do the dribble. See, this is, okay, this is the point where I would usually flip it, but I think that's the problem with the first How one. I don't know when to flip it. I'll okay, it it's a really good point. Most of the wet batter on top will have cooked off. You're shaking your head, why? What, isn't it the little bubbles? This particular batter doesn't get bubbly. It's when you've got a thicker batter. So no. Well, maybe for you. But for me, it's... Might be waiting too. Maybe. Here we go. Oh my goodness. First pancake off the rank. Look at that. Doesn't suck. Dad, you lied. You lied to me. And now it... What else did you lie about? My whole world's just been turned upside down. What else is not true? Do you think he lied to me about the sound of the Mr. Whippy van as well? Do you think he lied? When the Mr. Whippy music plays, they're out of ice cream, Jane. They're out of ice cream. Oh, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Still A little piece of my world just died. All right. So, obviously this is the bit that if the kids are doing it, you need to be helping them with this bit. I've got to turn that down. That is one very hot pan. I'm going to go with a tiny bit of oil for this. 
Now, sometimes you'll see those pancakes that have a really even surface, and that's usually because there's been a, a Teflon pan used, which spreads out hot spots a little bit more and gets that really even finish. I'm not into that. I like, look at this. I like a pancake with character. That's what this is. This is the butter and the oil creating hot spots. They are the crunchy, tasty bits. They are delicious. And I will fight you for the edge bits. Yes, I will. Mm-hmm. Do you, um, should we talk about toppings while we're cooking the, while we're cooking the rest of the stack here? There's a, there's a, a pancake topping in our house that it would be absolutely sacrilege for me to try and serve weekend pancakes without this topping. Do you want to shout it out for me? What is it? What's the? Lemon and brown sugar. Lemon and brown sugar. And what did I forget tonight? I forgot the lemon. Got brown sugar galore. No lemon. Our children don't believe their pancakes unless they are served with lemon and brown sugar. If they do not have those things, then clearly, Mum, they're not pancakes. They're some other abomination. How dare you serve them to me? That's the way it goes in our house. My they pants still. Like that too. They do. They say words like abomination. All right, I'm going to turn that right, right down and let that cool off a little bit because that is one fiery hot plate. Um, yeah. What else? What other? What other? Hmm? Were you yelling at me? I don't know what you're talking about over there. I'm going to do... Oh, dear. I'm burning my butter. I've been too ambitious. This will be the last one that we do. We only need the, the three. I'll let the rest of the batter rest overnight. Can you see me through that smoke? I've really overdone it there. Again, like I said, very forgiving recipe. Um, ooh, bit hot, that pan. Um, I didn't do that one very well at all, but like I said, it's a very, very forgiving okay, recipe. So the third one sucks? No, it'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. I just anyway, real. We call this real. Um, what other toppings are a preference? Maple. Maple. Honey. I'm a real yeah. I'm a massive fan of just like nothing but honey. Just a little bit of honey on a warm pancake. The honey goes beautiful and thin. It's just, what, I'm just blowing at the smoke in case you can't see what I'm blowing at here. <laughs> this is the joy of pancakes in our house. Look, it's fine. A little bit of a dark patch, but otherwise it's really, really good. Um, do you know what, I might plate this, do you know what? I'm gonna test the theory on the first one. What do you reckon? Yeah, we it might... looks like the best one. What are you saying? That my pancake skills are no good here. What are we gonna do? What do you mean it looks like the best one? That one looks really good there. You're so rude. I'm not making you pancakes anymore. I'm gonna make the children do it forever. There we go. So there we go. Those are our beautiful crepes. I'll turn that off. Now, I'm gonna take one for the team and I'm gonna eat the first pancake from the batch and let you know if it was in fact any good or if the lies that I was told as a child are in fact true. So let me just pop that out of the way. Here we go. Move the batter, on, we'll rest that and use that another day. Here we go. Look at that. That is a good looking, look how thin that is. I just have to show you, look how thin that is. Can you, you can just about see through it. Look at that. Did you look? Did you? We're looking. Did you look? It's We're very important. Looking. Very important. All right, so failing the fact that I don't have any lemon today, which is a huge dampener on my day, I'm going with my other favorite, which is... Um, whiskey. <laughs> it does look like whiskey. It's a little bit of maple syrup. <laughs> a little bit of maple syrup. Next best thing. Prove it. What do you mean? Does it, that it's not whiskey. Oh. Do you know what? It tastes great either way, straight out of the bottle. I'm just going to do... This was how we sort of had our pancakes growing up. A little bit of honey, a little bit of brown sugar or lemon. A little bit of maple. Now, if I was French, I would do a bit of this and a little bit of that, and we'd have this beautifully folded French crepe. I'm not French. I'm not even half Dutch. No, I am. I'm a, I'm a bit Dutch. A little bit Dutch. And um, in our house growing up, we always did these ones. I love this so much. This is pure joy. This is proper joyful food. 100%. 100% joyful food. There is no elegant way to do this. I'm not going to try and be elegant. I'm just going to go like this. You hold the end up to keep most of the juices in there, whatever you've got. 
That is just a taste of my childhood. Mm. Right there, I like the little pipe shape to keep all the maple syrup in the middle. Mm. That's some good technique. That is so good. And we have yet to teach our five-year-old how to do this. He makes such a mess. Um. Mm. That batter does not need resting. That is absolutely beautiful. And if that is not joyful food, I don't know what is. So I come here to show you how to do the fun food, the delicious food, but 100% is about joyful food. And that is so joyful. And it's easy and everyone should know how to do it. Teach your kids to do it so that you can sleep in on the weekend, yeah? Yeah? I'm asleep right now. You're asleep right now. I'm gonna finish this one. Thank you so much for joining me. Come back next time. Tell me what things you cooked in your childhood that you want me to explore a bit more, but frankly, I'm just gonna have my pancake moment. I'll see you next time. Name very much, Mr. They're so good.